All right, so let's look at an example. We've got y equals sine z, um, z going from 0 to pi. Uh, we'll see in a second why we have the domain restriction there. Um, let's label our coordinate axes, and, and let's sketch that curve. So y equals sine z um, in the yz plane is going to look something like, well, let's say so here's 0. Let's say up here is, is pi. Say that's one, and so it's there's so about pi over two, right? So we have that sine curve. Let's say like that, and we're going to revolve it. about the z-axis, right? So we're going to go around like so, so our circles are like this, right? And so now we're revolving about the z-axis, so that means our circles lie in planes that are parallel to the x-y plane, right? And so that means that our circles should look like x squared plus y squared equals, and now the radius, the radius is always a function of the variable corresponding to the axis we revolve around, which in this case is the z-axis, right? Um, so the radius is a function of z, and, and the radius is given by y, right? We can sort of you know, see that at some point along there. There's the radius for a, one of these circles. Okay. Radius is y. Y happens to be, for this curve, sine of z, right? And I guess we should be squaring that, right? So, so what we get in this case is that x squared plus y squared is sine squared z. And that's pretty much the whole story for this, right? Um, now, of course, if we didn't put the domain restriction, we would just get a whole bunch of these surfaces, one after the other after the other, and also going down, right? You get like a kind of a string of beads. Uh, we want just one of them, so we have that domain restriction. And I guess, you know, we really should kind of maintain that domain restriction for our surface as well.